Hi, I'm Dr. Meg Jackson Fox, Associate Curator of Academic and Public Programs at the Center for Creative Photography, and you're joining me for a Curator's Corner, where we'll be talking about Hiroshi Sugimoto's um, Arctic Ocean image. So let me just advance to the next slide. So while we have Sugimoto's Arctic Ocean Nord Cap from 1990 as our setting, and just as a quick aside, Nord Cap or North Cape was for a long time believed to be the northernmost point in Europe. Uh, it's in Norway, but alas, modern measurement determined that in fact, another point just to the west is 0.93 of a mile longer. So it technically lost its designation, but people still visit it as though it's the furthest because the actual point is an extremely difficult hack, which is just kind of a fun fact. But um, what I'd like for, to begin with is just a question that you can think about for a moment, which is how long do scientists believe you need to look at an artwork to get it? Again, so what is your hypothesis as to how long scientists believe we need to look at a single artwork in order to really understand it? So in fact, there is actually no one answer. Truly taking in an artwork is a fully subjective experience and it's dependent on such factors as the nature of the artwork itself, the person looking um, and the relationship of both person and artwork to the space in which it's being exhibited. So in other words, are you encountering an artwork in a white cube or say a landscape or a building with histories um, meant to add to the experience of an artwork? Studies tell us that the average museum goer spends approximately 15 to 30 seconds with any one given work of art. A Metropolitan Museum of Art study from 2001 clocked, clocked in our median on looking at 17 seconds, with the lowest being 10 seconds and the highest 27 seconds. While the Art Institute of Chicago just four years ago conducted a similar study with Akin results. So 21 seconds as our medium with as little as 10 seconds and now one second longer. So we have at 28 seconds is the highest amount of time to be with an artwork. Psychologist James Pawlewski equates that kind of time to browsing the stacks of a library without actually picking up a book. I'm personally drawn to artworks that have volumes, novels worth of information, even in the seemingly most minimalist of forms one that inspires perhaps even more curiosities and questions as it could ever yield literal pinpoint meanings, which I'm fully aware can be frustrating because we, are often, um, we often have such a proclivity for specificity and definitiveness. Um, so with images like this of Arctic Ocean, what we know is that Sugimoto's photographs, Sugimoto photographs a specific moment in time. We have the calm water, the distant horizon, the still weather. He tells us neither in notes nor in the title of the image, the actual time of day or even the time of year he took the image. In fact, North Cape is known for its midnight sun and its summer months. So for them, summer is May to July where the sun stays above the horizon around the clock. And in the winter, nearly the exact opposite is true with the sun rising no more than two hours. We just don't know by the image alone. And with this morsel of ambiguity, Sugimoto, at the same time as he makes us uh, the specific photograph of a specific instance in time of a specific place, the image also gives the impression of a timeless expanse, a seascape that could always be inevitably itself as it is. Primordial, he terms it, a scene from the ancient world still existing in our contemporary one. Primeval, unfathomable, enchanted, and sublime. Can somebody today view a scene just as primitive man might have? Sugimoto poses this question in relation to his seascapes. And I wanna just repeat that again. Um, can somebody today view a scene just as primitive man might have? In other words, can our imagination leap in such a way that we can perceive an image, in this instance, a seascape, outside of our own histories, our own experiences? Can we understand from another perspective? For me, the question is a poetic and actually quite political appeal for empathy. And one part empathy for alternative human experiences, though who have other, um, those who have other experiences, other histories, see the world fundamentally different. 
and another part empathy for the well-being of nature's expanse to want to see a natural seascape from a history from which you were never a part of is one element in understanding your role in future generations ability to see and experience that quote same seascape and if you see qualities of climate change activism here i do too I really enjoy what I would describe to be the simultaneities that I find to be embedded in Sugimoto's seascapes, that there's ephemerality here and timelessness, momentary stillness and the inevitability of movement, dusk and dawn. Honestly, I really am not sure whether he's captured dusk or dawn in any given image of the series and I kind of love that part. And it's also pretty universal and deeply singular and intimate. In the summer of 2020, um, that singular summer, as our curatorial and education team set out to design CCP's first online only exhibition in hopes of bringing our collection to you at home, our chief curator, Dr. Rebecca Simph, tasked us with identifying images that spoke to our personal experiences of 2020. And talk about simultaneities, I'd say 2020 and 2021 is proven to be similar, um, has without a doubt been a moment that reminded us of our really quite explicit um, collectivity that we are definitely anchored together, tied together, yet even in that collectivity, how we can experience moments totally unique to anyone else in the world. But with that task of connecting image and words to my own experiences of 2020, there was an inevitability of selecting Sugimoto. Um, I had kept going back to this image in our e-museum and CCP's e-museum as we worked remotely. And I first came across Sugimoto seascapes when considering how CCP's Instagram and Facebook channels might respond to the theme museum moment of Zen. It was a hashtag started by the museum city of New York uh, that went viral across social media platforms by museums worldwide. And the notion was to have institutions offer art as a kind of respite. And I really do love the word offering that Annie and Becky landed on for the online exhibition. And this respite, but this kind of respite from what was happening around us. And Sugimoto seascapes for me were the essence of a meditative offering, but a meditative offering of the world that isn't completely outside of the world, if that makes sense. It was a meditation of the world, irrevocably connected to the world even if it can imagine us beyond the specifics of the world at the same time. For example, we know by the titles that we are looking out into the expanse of a place, a specific place, North Cape, Norway. And yet by the image alone, truly we could be at so many seascapes, any place, anywhere in the world. Just trying to get my browser over again, okay. To add, it has occurred to me that my last substantial trip before our world shapeshifted was a visit to our family in Boston for the winter holidays, where we took a massive red pickup truck up the coastline from Boston to Halifax, Nova Scotia, where we visited this lighthouse on Peggy's Cove. And I have an inex inexplicable attraction to lighthouses, and I'm really not sure why, but it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a thing. And the wind was so incredibly powerful and wildly cold that I thought surely I would find myself in the bay and carried out into the Atlantic Ocean. And I distinctly remember feeling as though we could have been standing at the end of the earth at the far reaches of North America, and we'd been none the wiser. Of course, Peggy's Cove is neither the end of the earth nor the farthest reaches of North America, but it was impressive and magnificent and enchanted and sublime. And Sugimoto's image reminded me of standing in, in Nova Scotia, so much so that just for a second there at my computer and my guest room turned home office, these memories um, waved in almost tangibly. And when I talk about understanding art, or at the very least experiencing art, I describe it much the way Sugimoto believed us to experience a sea with our own histories, our own mentalities and abilities and identities and imaginations and so on the list can go, participates in what we see and what we sense. It's the intertwinement of the tangible and intangible of art and actual life and something woven inside us over time too. And I love that kind of aesthetic meditation. Arctic Ocean Nordcap is one in a vast series of images made over several decades, beginning in 1980. 
As of the publication of the first edition Hiroshi Sugimoto Seascapes in 2015, Sugimoto had made 200 images of seascapes from all over the world, from the Caribbean Sea to the English Channel to Kattegat, a shallow sea nestled between Denmark and Sweden. Sugimoto writes of his seascape series, water and air, so very commonplace are these substances, they hardly attract attention, and yet they vouchsafe our very existence. A few lines down in his description, he continues with, mystery of mysteries, water and air are right there before us in the sea. Every time I view the sea, I feel a calming sense of security. As if visiting my ancestral home, I embark on a voyage of seeing. I have asterisked here um, our image in orange so we can keep sight of it specifically, but we gain additional insights about our Arctic Ocean Nord cap when we return it to its greater series. And Sugimoto prints the images at exactly the same scale in the instance of CCP's collection. It's a nine, roughly approximately nine by 12 um, inch in photolithographs with a large format camera. That consistency, that repetition is extended to the cause the composition of the image. So that consistency, that repetition is extended to the composition of the image with the horizon line existing in the identical position within each image of seascapes. And even with this methodical repetition established by Sugimoto, and even with this attempt to systematize, systematize every single seascape from all over the world into exactly the same composition and exactly the same frame, with exactly the same technique, each scape reveals itself, each seascape reveals itself as inevitably itself. Utterly unique horizon lines, unable to be strictly recreated with utmost precision. And with the large format camera, Sugimoto used longer exposure times, like a really long extended look at the sea and horizon, if you will, in an attempt to smooth and soften the image to its most tranquil. In May of 2020, during what we now know to be the earliest stages of the pandemic, Sugimoto released a new approximately 13 or 14 minute long video titled The Second Silent Spring. The video essay, remarkably like the ones our team created, weaves together a short history of pandemics with his own body of work. Um, it was a video that expressed a mourning in a way with the cancellation of one of his shows, including notably a selection of one image from Seascapes. And as the photograph appeared, he used the image to question if the pandemic might be not, as we assumed in the Middle Ages, the retribution of God, but instead a response from nature, nature's reckoning in a way, an assertion of itself due, due to humanity's failure, and a, an opportunity for turning point, um, an opportunity for a turning point for civilization where growth means not growing anymore. For Sugimoto, the seascape was the embodiment of his, um, of his argument. And when we return, I hope that we can um, have a print viewing with a lot of these images so that y'all can come um, and experience them in person with us. Thanks. <laughs>